Hey guys, so we're back with another Pocket Tube video and this week we're going to look at something that we have looked at in the past except it's just been updated and that is the Pocket Installer. Now first things first, if you haven't watched the video on the Pocket Installer I suggest you do so and install uh, Pocket Installer onto your Pocket Chip. Once you've installed Pocket Installer on your Pocket Chip you'll see the little icon here once you've created that and you've installed Pocket Home. If you haven't then obviously you'll have to boot it through the terminal but once you've booted it up um, you should notice that a few things are on there, um, like Minecraft, etc, etc. Now, in order to update Pocket Installer, you have to actually run the install script again, which will be below. And once you've done that, you can simply uh, load up Pocket Installer through the terminal again, come back out, and once you click on this one, it should ask me for a password, which is chip. And I know I should be using my keyboard today, but I really cannot be bothered. and then it should say welcome to pocket installer it will run all the necessary commands and then it should update let's see if we can plug in my USB uh, mouse and keyboard into the top here just so that it's ready way it helps if I do things the right way there we go now for those of you that want to know what I am using a couple of people have asked in previous videos I have mentioned it before but I'll go ahead and show you guys again uh, what exactly it is it is actually a backlit uh, mini USB keyboard um, that came from Amazon. You can buy them for around 10 to 13 pounds, and they're pretty handy. You just plug the USB into the back of the pocket chip, and away you go. Now, this is taking a little longer than usual, and I'm unsure as to why. But once we get through, we should see uh, the typical pocket installer homepage which if you have updated by following the install script below uh, will have a few quite significant new add-ons or added extras uh, that weren't there last time there we go and uh, now that we're on here you can see we've got the typical Medafin Vice, is it Vice? I think it's Vice OpenTTD, DOSBox, ScumVM which we had before, PCSX uh, which I think we had before, uh, Neo Geo, Zoom, BSD Games and Minecraft which we had before. We now have a few extras which is XU4, FreeDroid, Column, uh, uh, Zsar UX and Zork. Now if we type on FreeDroid and press install it should automatically install all the dependencies that we need as well as the specific uh, requirements um, or the specific settings for the pocket chip and uh, then we should be able to just boot FreeDroid itself from the terminal now you can do this with all the programs on there uh, some programs are just genuinely easier to install via the terminal without pocket installer but some programs uh, specifically like this uh, do need to be installed through the installer as there are certain things that if you install it through the terminal um, are different. I noticed personally installing this through the terminal that uh, the screen resolution was too large and it was not scale scalable to the correct size installing it through the terminal so I'm hoping installing it through the installer we will get those settings uh, correctly in place now as you can see we've exited that now so I presume that is uh, all fine and dandy so we should just be able to go across to the terminal and uh, then we should be able to type in uh, the command and I have completely forgotten what the command was for some bizarre reason my memory is absolutely terrible as you guys know so I'm gonna have to check what it actually was. Why did I forget it? I only just did it. Yeah, that was it. Free droid. Okay. And okay, it looks like 
despite the fact you've installed your pop installer, uh, it is in fact still not um, still not tied to the screen, which is not good enough. It's not good enough. No, I'm joking. Whoever worked on this, you did a cracking job. Um, but it's times like these where you just want to get out and scream because it didn't work. Um, still, we can always try something else. So let's uh, let's take a look at what else we've got, shall we? Obviously, we have to click the home button on the pocket chip device and boot it up again. Hopefully, it won't take the, so long this time. Sometimes it does this as well, which is which is a mystery to me. Um, because then we have to do it a completely different way, and it's a nightmare. So I'm unsure as to why we did we get this. Maybe if we press, uh, maybe we just quit the terminal together, go back to pocket installer. There we go. Hopefully, it doesn't do the same thing it did last time and take forever to boot up. But, you can basically see what I'm trying to get out here. The whole thing's been updated with a few more apps and programs for your little pocket chip. So if you own one of these devices, this is probably the most sensible way of installing stuff uh, with regards to installing stuff. You can do it for the terminal one. I personally, some ways, uh, prefer doing it for the terminal now, even though I used to hate the terminal. Now I've had a good nearly a year with the device, uh, I quite enjoy using the terminal. But uh, through this pocket installer thing, it does seem like quite a innovation in a sense. The oddity is you have to obviously go through the terminal to even install this. So either way, you've got to install something through the terminal. Now it would be nice for uh, the guys over at Nexting to possibly inc include this in a firmware uh, in the next firmware, just to include it on there ready for you to install stuff then that would alleviate the problem of certain people buying this and having to go through the terminal to install it I think that is probably the best idea I've ever had anyway we'll go through exactly what is on there and then we will end the video but uh, yeah this is just a little look at the update it's quite a nice update it's got quite a few nice things that have been added and it obviously makes the device a little more usable depending on whether you use this on a daily basis like me. I personally love this little thing, I would not live without it now that I've got it and to be honest I think it's definitely an innovative product in the sense that you've got Linux on a handheld, it's great. So we've got, you know, we'll go through the whole list just to tell you. MedNafin is obviously emulation. Vice, again, emulation. OpenTTD is Transport uh, Tycoon Deluxe, which I think we've installed in the past. We've got DOSBox, which again is DOS emulation. ScumVM, which is uh, the typical framework for um, it's Scum Virtual Machine. It's like, um, what's the word? It's, an, it's a game engine. You can run games through that. Uh, you've got PCSX, which will be uh, a PSX emulation, PlayStation emulation. GN... GNGO, which is Neo Geo emulation, Zoom, which is Z Machine, which I've not really tried out yet, so I'm not entirely sure. BSD Games is obviously that online tank game that we tried out a few weeks back, and it's really, really good. You got Minecraft on here, which is nice, but we have installed that in the past via the terminal. Uh, Minecraft Pocket Chip Edition, which is great, which is actually a port of the Raspberry Pi version, and it works really, really well. XG4, again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, Zork, I know, is a is a uh, Terminal game of sorts and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy may be another terminal based game, text based in fact. So there's quite a lot there and there's quite a lot being added in this update. It's a nice little update so if you've got this I definitely recommend you go and update it now with the script that is down in the description. If you haven't got it I recommend you start from scratch and install it. There will be a link to the forum post or you can follow my video which will also be linked below. 
If you like this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. And as always, guys, please slap the subscribe button because we've now got to 1,022 subs, which is awesome, and hopefully we can reach 2,000 before the end of the year. Who knows? But everything is moving swimmingly. Uh, hopefully, at some point, we have the Snickerdoodle, which is another SPC that is on the way, and we're going to try that out and uh, experiment with that. And we've also got the Orange Pie videos coming out on a Friday. Now, just to let you know, this week, I do have an operation on Wednesday, so... I may be out of the loop on Friday, but who knows, hopefully not, hopefully we'll just get the, the video sorted as usual, and as always you guys have uh, my look at videos to look forward to if you like those as well. So I shall see you very soon guys, and thanks again for watching, cheers.